Yay, howdy folks, how we doing? Um, I hope you're good. It's Friday afternoon for me. Uh, this video might be a little bit chatty because I planned it and sort of sorted myself out for it on last weekend, uh, last Sunday, and haven't really looked at it since. It's been a crazy week. I'm a little tired. Um, I'm just trying to get this in now because my, my lovely neighbour Sue has finished weeper snippering, I hope. <laughs> because um, I, I got everything out. Okay, so this is my, it's kind of a plans. It's my new plan on how I do plans, sewing plans video for spring. Um, and yeah, I got everything out and then my lovely neighbor started whippersnippering her front lawn. I thought, okay, you know, she's not gonna take very long doing that. It's not very big. And she stopped and I was like, okay, let's go again. And then she started on her next door neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean, wonderful. But sh she'll she'll do the neighbours at the same time as well. But um, yeah, noisy. Anyway, I think she's finished. So let's go. Um, right. So I decided. Well, I was feeling very overwhelmed. Let's start with that. I was feeling really overwhelmed with the sewing that I wanted to do for myself. I mean, for my business. Oh, hi, I'm Simone. I have a business called Goblin Fruit, which is why this channel is called Goblin Fruit. But for that business, I do sewing for the fashion industry. Um, but this is, I mean, I do intend to do some videos about that kind of thing. Um, but this so far is just sewing stuff for myself and um, trying to explore uh, commercial patterns and other patterns other than the ones that I make myself but there's a bit of bit of both in there anyway that said hi welcome if you like that kind of thing maybe think about subscribing that'd be cool and all that other YouTube stuff and um, so it's September uh, here in Australia where it's spring uh, we start spring on the first of the month September um, even though I know that other places in the world like to go with equinoxes and lunar stuff. Um, I mean, really, everything has been in full bloom here, like the natives, for a couple of weeks. So, I think spring sort of happens here when there's a lot of water, which I guess makes sense. Um, which is also kind of in winter. Anyway, that's all confusing enough. It is getting warmer. So I'm thinking about making some warmer things for myself. I now have so many fabrics that I have bought to make things for myself. So many patterns that I have bought to make things for myself that I have reached this stage of complete paralysis where I've got no idea what to do. Um, and I was thinking I really want to do like some challenges. I've never done a sewing challenge, you know, that runs on YouTube or Instagram. Or, I mean, I'm really bad at Instagram. You can join me at Not By Design, but I'm, I really suck at it. I haven't even done the photo post for last week's video yet. That's how bad it is. That's one post in a whole week. Haven't done it. It's good. <laughs> anyway, this might really be a chatty video. I saw, um, just as I was thinking I'd like to do a challenge, uh, Whitney from Tomcat Stitchery here on YouTube said that she was going to do um, another run of her module sewing challenge. And this is like a working from home module sewing challenge. Um, so if you're not familiar with those, she um, has this idea which she actually got from another YouTuber who's a stylist, Christy Russell. This idea of like for your wardrobe, styling your wardrobe in modules that all coordinate and that you can make a, a vast number of, of outfits from all of these coordinating pieces. And so Whitney went on to say, well, you could sew and take from your wardrobe to create this coordinating module and know that all of those things will mix and match in your wardrobe. Great. Great start to having a new spring wardrobe. Awesome. I could make, and the modules are in her um, setup, or in, in their setup, um, two bottoms, three tops, and a topper. 
which I think is a very American term. I know, like a piece of outerwear or a layering piece. Um, I'm going to twist that a little bit because for me, and so does Whitney, she adds a dress or a jumpsuit, and I'm certainly going to do that. Um, and I really don't need to put any toppers in my wardrobe at the moment. I mean, coming into spring and definitely in summer here in Perth, WA, you don't really need to wear a whole lot of layers. In fact, probably the only layer that I really wear is a white cotton shirt over the top so I don't get burnt. Um, and those are generally as light as possible. I generally thrift them and I've got a couple in my wardrobe already. I don't see myself needing another one this summer. So I'm not gonna do a top up. Um, but, and then I was just gonna limit myself to like one dress or one jumpsuit, but I can't. I have multiple things that I want to do. And then came the overwhelm of I said, um, I'm gonna do this um, inspired by Dior Cruz 2021 video, um, which I've been talking about for a while, I'll, it's, it's gonna happen. And there's a couple of things from that, like inspiration from that that I wanna make as well. Um, and then I did the video on fabric mixing, um, mixing multiple fabrics in the one garment, and I've got all of these small pieces of fabric, and I was like, yes, I wanna do that too. And it just, it's just all too much. So I've, and then there was another challenge, shelf sewing September, which is great, like sewing from your stash, so I can just be limited to these things that I already have. And I've also found a glitch in that idea. Because if I need to make bottoms, I actually don't have enough bottom weight fabric. Everything's very lightweight. Uh, yeah. And then also I've changed my hair color, and I kind of feel that that means that I need to change some of my wardrobe colors because there's a little bit of a clash going on. And a lot of the, the fabrics that I have left over from like last summer, things that I wanted to make last summer that I didn't get to, um, are not really the colors that I want to make things in anymore. Or maybe they will be in summer, but now for spring I need a bit more of a transition. <sighs> yeah. But I've come up with a plan. So this is my plan and my hope in sharing this with you is that it might help you overcome all of this overwhelm and I've got so many choices craziness, right? So my main one is to just limit things, to really, really cut down on the options. Just really circle in. First, I circled in on the patterns that I definitely wanted to make. Um, I really do need to make some bottoms. I don't have much in my wardrobe at all. There was one or two patterns, two I think, from um, my winter plans that I still haven't made that will be fine for all year round that I still really want to make. So I definitely had those. Um, and those were the two bottoms um, I've shown before. So this is a McCall's pattern for a jumpsuit, but I'm just going to make the bottom of the jumpsuit the pants. And I've seen people do this on Instagram and do a really good job. Um, so it is these pants, these super, super wide leg pants. And you can get them to have like a really sort of um, vintage-y 30s, 40s. And in my inspo, I did do, I yeah, I did do uh, a little, little wardrobe inspo board on Pinterest as well. Um, again, I find it really helpful to try and cut my choices down to five. Like five inspo photos. That's it. Refine it right, right down. Because always, like even like, um, you know, in fashion you do mood boards for your collection. I've always ended up with collection mood boards with like a hundred photos in them. Two hundred, three hundred. It doesn't help, it's not helpful, it's too much. It's trying to cram too many ideas into one thing. So, five inspiration photos. And one of those was, I think, a 30s image of a woman in very, very wide drapey pants. And the fabric that I have for this is super, super drapey. It is this heavyweight uh, twill. This is a polyester twill. I think um, it's listed as Japanese, but it is so heavy. 
like it's just gonna fall like a pants. I don't think you can see that, but really, really wide. So they'll sit close to the body. They won't stick right out like the ones in the photo. I mean, they stick right out on her and make her look like the world's. She's got huge hips, which I wouldn't mind because I've got no hips, so I can take all the help I can get. We'll, we'll just create the illusion of having more shape. <laughs> With this, and yeah, it's so heavy. Um, yeah, so that's bottoms plan number one. So I was like, okay, I'm working with navy, right? Now bottoms plan number two really jolted the color spectrum because most things go with navy. Um, but bottoms choice number two turned out, and I've heard um, quilters do this as well when choosing, like when they're auditioning fabrics for their quilt, to pick one very, very strong print and work everything off of that. And so this idea did involve a very strong print. Like I've wanted to do this for a while. This is an upholstery fabric, I think. Um, it's, it's, it's cotton, it's like a heavy cotton canvas. It's been screen printed. It's definitely vintage. I'd say it's very vintage 70s, but I want to feel that it's sort of more mid-century modern, you know, very kind of, something that you, it's, the print is too small or something for that. But I, I then started calling this collection mid-century modern, even though that's normally referred to in architecture and um, interiors. That's the word I'm looking for, architecture and interiors. Uh, and this isn't quite that. I mean, it's a very, very vivid orange. It's a very heavy weight. But I also have the perfect pattern for it, I think, which is this skirt. So, trying to get everything in my module to mix back with this colour, like on all the tops that I did, was like the pivotal point where I started eliminating a whole heap of the colours of fabrics that I had to cut back down to this. Um, so... I think that was probably the most helpful thing that I did, even though I'm not even sure about this colour on me. I really probably wouldn't normally wear Vivid Burnt Orange, but it'll be the skirt. And I'm also going to attempt, even though the print in it is also black, to match it back with, I'm sorry, the navy pants doesn't matter because they're other bottoms and you don't have, uh, yeah, different. Um, I'm also going to, even though the base help colour is like a linen-y, natural linen-y colour, um, I'm going to try and pair that back with white, some white tops, or off-white tops. I mean, what do we think? Can I wear white with that? Is that? I think so. I think that's very fresh and summery and mid-century modern with all my bangles. Anyway, okay. So, that was bottom number two. So, for one capsule, that's it, right? So, two bottoms, three tops. Um, yes, I'm actually thinking on two capsules, that's why I'm getting confused, um, because I couldn't limit it to one, I tried really, really hard, and then I have still got extras sort of overflowing, and I mean, this is, none of these plans are like absolutely set in stone, and some of them, like the tops are a bit, I've got these things to work with, see how we go, uh, and I think that's actually really good for me, uh, because if things are like, set in stone, then I kind of, I've lost the impetus of the moment, of the designing. The designing part is my favourite bit, so when that design is fresh in my head, that's when I want to do it. Um, so this skirt, and I have actually already started it, this is my, um, I now have this, this little kit for my current project. So it's my other, this is, so that when I do my day of work, which is working on this cutting table with my machines, with different coloured thread, then when I'm finished, I can put that away and grab this out and I know exactly what I'm going to and what I'm going to do. And I can do that for like half an hour or an hour and pack it all back up again and put it away and be ready for the next day's work. Yeah, my theory, my theory. And I picked these buttons, um, which I had in my stash. So using my stash. Also, oh, this fabric, by the way, came from my neighbor. Um, She's 
probably in her 60s, um, but this was her mother's. So I don't know what age it is. I, I think it's 70s, but um, it could be older. It could be. And then, yeah, these little buttons to go with. Is that what you think? Cute? I think that'll be cute. Yeah. I mean, I kind of bought these with the vague idea that this is what they would be for anyway. Um, but I was ordering some stuff wholesale and these were with the company and I was like, I think I want those too. And um, buttons here, like buttons from Spotlight are really expensive. But if I order a tube wholesale, it's so much cheaper. I mean, these are still listed as for retail $2.30 each. They certainly didn't cost me that wholesale. Hmm. Handy. Anyway, okay, so that's bottoms number two. And that project is actually already started and cut out. This is the extra fabric, which we'll see what I do with that. And it lives Ooh. under there. <laughs> okay, so then, all right. So instead of doing a topper, I'm going to do a jumpsuit and a dress. My problem is I've got like five dress ideas. So even if we're working across two capsules, I've still got one too many. Two too many? Maybe two too many. Plus my jumpsuit. Okay. Mm. All right. Jumpsuit. One jumpsuit for spring. Um, I think I've mentioned doing this one as well before, and I can't remember what fabric I said I was doing it in then, but I think it might have been this fabric. So this is a really beautiful Tencel twill that I got from a wholesaler. Um, the colour's coming up really yellow because, oh, that's a bit better. It's getting on in the afternoon here, and I've had to turn on a light. Um, and the lights are very, very yellow. Anyway, so it's, um... I'd say it's olive, some would probably say it's khaki, um, I think Americans say khaki, and then that's more brown, and it's, khaki is brown, khaki is green. <laughs> um, yeah, so this, right, for this jumpsuit, da, da, da. and I think that'll be really nice, and then I can put, like as I said, I'm thinking about doing some white shirts, so I can put those underneath, and that'll be really cute. But then I had this other idea on the fabric mixing thing, right? Um, 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 where is it? Ah. Okay. I have this little piece of satin that I've been dying to use for ages. And it's so pretty. I mean, look at the boaties. Upside down. Upside down, Miss Jane. There we go. Boaties. Um, and look, it kind of goes with my bracelets, do you think? All of this. See, I'm coordinating and ready for spring already. Um, but I've never really known what to do with it because it is satin. It's quite sort of a thick satin. Um, and I mean, it's, I've used parts of it already. It was used in a, another project. Uh, and I know that it, like, it doesn't really hold a fold or anything like that. Um, so I could make a very small 50 star top out of it, which like, I mean, one of my other plans, like one of these sorts of ones. And this would, this top would be in the second module. I'm really thinking of making this one. Um, again, I've seen some people on Instagram do it and it looks really, really cute. Although I think all of them are super cute. I don't know if I'm up for a crop top, but I can modify that so it's not a crop top because I like that little square neckline um yeah but again that's probably not suited to this fabric either help me um okay so the idea with this fabric with the overalls i'm getting there um is there is like this little i don't know if you can see it is it a better picture on the inside oh yeah line drawing um See how it's got like the top, the straps, and then there's this bar across the top? I was thinking I could do that, just the straps and the neckline in the green floral, in the green birdies. 
I just don't know if it's going to fold really nice and give nice crisp edges to do that with. Or if the satin with the twill is going to give a mixed image of dressy and casual. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Because I really want to use this. But it is zero drape satin. I mean, satin's annoying as it is. But it's not even a lightweight satin. It's thick. But the print is so pretty and it would look so cute on me. Anyway. Okay. So, that's my jumpsuit. And my dress. Okay. As I said, there are multiple dress ideas. But to go with this kind of look in these greens is... So, this is a vintage... Vintage? 80s, 90s. Well, they do... They do say on them what they are. Um, sometimes. Printed in the USA. Style patterns. Okay. Now that I've said that, look, oh. uh, 1993. This is the year I graduated high school. There we go. All right, so this one. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking of making the dress that the model is wearing. Um, so it's just like a very basic um, shift dress um, with fisheye darts front and in the back. Uh, and the back is like a lower v-neck and then it's just got this wrap piece that goes across the top now i was thinking of making it in black i am not opposed to, I, I i want more black in my wardrobe i think at the moment um same fabric as the green this um ten cell twill that's really i mean it's kind of hard to tell when it's folded up like this but it is really soft and drapey it's very very soft it's not super thick um but, you know, nice sort of summer, warm weather weight. Um, I've also made a pair of pants in bright red, paper bag waist pants in bright red that I've mentioned on this before in the same fabric. Um, so that for the dress. But then the wrap bit across the front, I was thinking of making in this. This is um, a sarong that I got in Bali when I was there a couple of years ago and never really worn again. It's obviously 100% cotton because it's a bit wrinkly. But um, I think it's got this mid-century modern kind of a feel. Um, there is a photo of kind of the... Okay, so this inspiration photo, I'll pop in here um, while I drop stuff all over the floor. Um... Obviously, it's no reflection of the dress or the silhouette of the dress um, or even the print that I've got. It actually makes me want to buy more fabric and I've seen some fabric like this and I, I really kind of want it. But for this first module at least, I'm not buying fabric. For the second module, I can kind of justify it. <laughs> um, anyway, so this cotton gives me that... I mean, at first, the term that I was using was Polynesian Palm Springs, but I decided that was really culturally derivative and um, I know nothing about Polynesian fashion. I mean, you can't just say shove a tiki on it and it's all good. It's, no. <laughs> but I mean, you know, yeah, it was just a more evocative image because it's such a prevalent kind of 1950s style. But I'm certainly not going to be making any sort of corseted sarong. You know that, okay, another photo. It's a very typical repro 1950s look is this tiki lounge sarong front um, cocktail dress. And I already own one of those that a friend of mine made um, and I never wear it. And so we won't be going there. But this, I think, has the same kind of feel, but it's a bit more relaxed. Um, and not so obviously 50s. But I'll, feel a bit, I'll feel a bit more comfortable and I won't be kind of trying to corset myself to make it look right. Yeah? With that sarong over there? I think that might be cute. 
Um, I mean, yeah, as for like a work from home module, I mean, I do work from home, but I don't have to wear like business clothes or anything. So, I mean, I wear like, I guess what I'm wearing, like all winter I've worn a lot of stretch stuff because that's what I wear in winter, but in summer it won't be the same. Um, so yes, okay, so dress number one, jumpsuit number one for this module, so far we're on track, all I have left is the three tops. Now that's why I decided to be a bit more loosey-goosey. Because uh, I love making tops. I don't need to restrict myself on tops. Um, and I'll just plunge into doing them all the time. But I then had all of this, all of this fabric that I haven't allocated to an idea, um, but does still go with the like it'll go back with that orange skirt. I probably should have left that fabric out actually. No, not that drop. All right. So, like all of these guys, like if I may had tops in any of these, I could wear them with that, yeah? Maybe not these two underneath. They might be a little bit too bold of a mix and match plan. Oh, but I don't really want to make them up. I mean, they still have that same feel. And I mean, the whole point of the module is that, I mean, all of these I could definitely wear with a navy. I have no problem wearing black with navy. Like a black top with navy pants. Um, and this, these as tops would look fantastic with the navy pants. But the point of the module is that everything mixes and matches, so these tops I could wear with this skirt. All right, all right, all right. Help me out. Can I do this? Or am I going to have to reserve these for module number two? Would you? <laughs> so this is um, a Nerida Hansen fabric. Well, I bought it from Nerida Hansen. It's Holly Zollinger. For now, and it's cotton sateen. I don't think it's in print anymore. And it's only a remnant. So it's not a huge piece. So I might still have to mix it with other fabrics anyway to, to do the things that I want. Mm. I don't know. What do we think? Is I mean, it's some very bold pattern mixing, but the colours still go in that peacock. Where's another part of the print? Can I be that bold? Ooh, actually, I really like that. It's cray-cray, but I like it. I don't know. Tell me what you think. And this one as well, different again. Can I wear those two prints together? I mean, this scale on this rose, it's another Holly Zollinger for Nerida Hansen Cotton Satin. It's another Remnant. Um, that's madness. Madness! I don't know about that. Yeah, um, I like the peacocks better. All right, well, maybe I've reserved the peacocks for this collection, and this might be the next module. Which I've also got here as well. Is it way too long a video if I go through both modules' plans? Let's see how we go. Um, okay, so with the tops, so all of these, the idea is to just kind of mix and match these fabrics together. I also have this little remnant piece that I am dying to slip into something. It's so pretty. I got it from a fabric wholesaler. Um, do you think, what, a yoke on a top? Or maybe a bib on a top? On a shirt, blouse? Like this, and then a slit down the middle and a little tie? Yeah, gorgeous. And then, I mean, particularly with one of those roses being so orange, and so it's like a white shirt with a bib or a yoke and that in it. This little piece I got from a fabric wholesaler and it's still, it was, you know how, um, I mean, not in retail stores, but in wholesale, when you're buying wholesale, they'll have the fabric up on boards, um, like a sample piece like this, and you flick through all the boards to order what you want. So they're on a, a header. Um, and then they have all of this, like, around the edges to protect them, covered in sticky tape. 
I've had to do a, quite a lot of these, do a textile header, <laughs> both at fashion school and then I did some work for another textile company, <laughs> making, yeah, it's, it's a really boring job, <laughs> it's a really boring job, <laughs> um, but it has to be done, these things have to be done, but I have it backwards, that's the frontwards, was I showing you backwards? Look at it, embroidered silk, goodness dying to use that um i mean i guess i could as i said with one of those ones before it might be big enough to use on that front panel no it wouldn't be i don't think so gather it up and then it won't make it to that neckline over the top of my boobs i don't think and then that would be so pretty though don't you think on that one with that just the silk embroidered across the front with these my other challenge with working with this pattern I had actually thought of using this pattern for the next module never mind we'll talk about it now it's all good um, is that I want to be able to not wear a bra because you can't wear a bra with that like with these necklines so I want to use bra foam inside the design to give you that shape as if you were wearing a bra. And yet the comfort of not wearing a bra, I think that'd be cool. Um, if you want to see me challenge, like try and try and do that, if that's interesting, let me know. Um, Cause I don't care, I mean, just the illusion of the shape and the covering of the obvious movement, but without any lift, I don't care. And I'm not wearing a bra now. So lift, me. Anyway, okay, so there's that idea. Um, now, the top patterns that I want to work with are these two. Okay, so, um, this wrap top I've been dying to make. Uh, the problem is it takes a lot of fabric. So what is this? If you see, um, A, B, C, and maybe a size. It's like nearly two meters of fabric. Or one and a half meters if I can squeeze myself into a size 12. I could probably do a size 12, do my usual, don't use all the seam allowance because the seam allowances are nuts. Garment measurement bust. Oh yeah, the size 12 finished garment measurement is 39 and a half inches. That's huge. Yeah. Okay, so a metre and a half. The only problem is with most of these remnant pieces is I don't even have a metre. So I'll have to be mixing and matching the fabrics. Um, I don't know how keen I am on the idea of doing one bust front, one fabric, and the other wrap over the other fabric. I don't know that that's me. It does have a forward... Okay. Sorry, little interruption there, camera stuff. Um, okay, right. So this, it does have like a forward seam on the shoulder seam. So I could push a little yoke into that, that sort of sat over the shoulders and then went down the back a little bit. Whoops. I'm <laughs> doing really well. Um... That might be cute. I mean, it doesn't have a yoke in the back, but I could put one on. Um, oh, it's also a part of the sleeve. The sleeve, it's not a set-in sleeve, it's a grown-on sleeve. Yeah, could be interesting. Anyway, um, to mix and match the fabric up a little bit. I might be able to make it. Anyway, the fabric choices. So this one. I really want to do this one. Um, I showed you before I had that, when I bought the pit trading haul, um, my little 50s shirt that I kind of want to reproduce and I'm going to use this pattern as a base for that. I think it will be B here, just a little shirt. And if I really like this, there is so much that I can do to change this pattern to be other things. Like if it fits and it's really nice, it's, you know, world is your oyster. You could do heaps with this because it's also got the long sleeve. Um, 
there's also yeah options without the collar um, so you could put a different type of collar on it if you wanted to um, but yeah to have a basic shirt pattern that fits I think that would be great um, there's also of course this other pattern which I'm leaving open because I make this all the time and I think some more summery versions would be great and I I've only made the long sleeve version in a knit so I'd like to make it in a cotton or something and I've got I've hacked this seven ways to Sunday so I think that would be nice to keep keep working on that idea all right that's my tops my top fabrics that is the tops isn't it yeah okay so my tops fabrics are these ones I've already shown you this one um, this was that pit trading broderie on glaze that'll definitely go back with the I mean the white with the linen I'm not worried about so I think that'll look great I've just got some white I know it's like a viscose just plain white it might be used for a top it might be used for linings because I have some other stuff that needs to be lined then I have that little piece of black embroidered goodness that I could insert into something um, and this one as well. Again, these are from the Pit Trading haul, so you guys have already seen them. Go back into that video if you want to have a look. Maybe I'll do the card thing if I if I haven't remembered. I'll link it below. Um, and now this one you haven't seen. Okay, and the other two that you have seen. So the white, I think for spring, and then this plain black voile. Maybe so nice. But this one you haven't seen. This is another one from my neighbor and it's brown. I don't know guys, can I do brown? I'm trying to reconcile myself to brown since I now have brown hair. What do we reckon? But it's like a, oops. Uh, I don't know if it's cotton, but it's like an organdy. It's really stiff. Um, very see-through obviously I'd yeah pick a good bra for that one but you know there's something about it I really like but yeah so it's a vintagey one from my neighbor's mum uh, again see it goes with the bracelets what do we think we're thinking mid-century modern or slightly more um, 70s it's quite 70s like the at the skirt anyway so that one, so that's all the different top fabrics that I can play with. I've also got these two laces that I'm up and down about. I, actually the same lace, but I dyed it this colour, thinking that I might like it better, but actually I think I like it the original colour. And I could do like a lace insert with this on a neckline. Right? Okay. Now... I'm just going to finish, like there is a whole nother um, module in my head. Two other bottoms. Oh, I, I want to show you the, oh actually there's three bottoms. One's a pair of collots that I just don't have fabric for. There is this fabric that I've seen online that I really, really want to buy. And I've told myself I'm not buying fabric. But if I don't have bottom weight fabric and I need bottoms, then I kind of need to buy fabric, right? Um, and this will really go with this collection idea, this fabric I've seen. And if I order it now, it's not going to arrive for like six weeks. So surely by six weeks I'll have gaps in my, my shelves here to fit more stuff in, right? Right? Oh, you see these, these are the, the, the rejects. This is probably my summer colour lot. This doesn't go with this browns and neutrals and orange and navy theory as well. Anyway. So I have another, like another dress idea. Oh no, I'm gonna show you the two bottoms. Mm. All right, only because these two fab, these two patterns, these vintage patterns. Like I found this one this week, and this one, I just again, it's this this wrap idea. Let's see this lovely '80s lady, isn't she a shocker? Bless her. Um, but the skirt pattern, I think that's really cute. Just a little wrap over. Be super, super easy to do. Um, in these new fabrics, it would be really nice that I've got my eye on. 
But I've also got, again from my neighbour's mum, this, which, I mean, this is the ultimate in kind of mid-century modern, surely. It totally looks like, like a, a wall in a house, a mid-century house. Um, I don't know if it will be suited for the skirt because it is quite sheer, but I could line it. I could make it double-sided with like a linen -y colour on that, just a plain linen new, neutral whatever fabric on the other side. Be nice. I don't know. But I just love this fabric and I love that pattern. But I don't know if I'm like now trying really hard to find fabrics that are bottom weight. Because if I don't. Well, I have some others, but I've already earmarked them for other things. And they won't go with this. Okay. So that. And then the other pattern that I found this week um, is a very, very similar idea. The top and the skirt have already been cut out in a size 10, which is just miles too small for me in this one. A size 10 in this is a body waist measurement of 25 inches. Like, seriously, that's nuts. <laughs> I'm not getting anywhere near 25 inches unless, you know, somebody puts me in a detention camp or something. Um, but, I mean, I'm technically first generation Australian, but that still counts. I don't think we're going to war with England. I think I can just have white person privilege all over that one. Um, but the shorts, right? Okay, back onto it. They're like little wrap shorts. I think they're great. I think they'll be great for summer. Um, so, yeah, I've got that, that, yeah, that's not cut out, so I can make it in my size. Um, what's a better, a better image? Okay, here we go. Are they cute or what? So a little wrap across the front and then just shorts on the back. Yeah, I want to make those. Again, I don't really have a fabric. Uh, I really want to buy this fabric and I can totally justify it. Can I just, just, just yeah. But. I have another dress idea which is kind of for the second module, not for the first module, but I want to share it with you because I'm really excited about it, which will probably turn out to be the thing that I make first because I'm really excited about it, even though it's not what I, yeah. But I'm keeping the plans a little loosey-goosey so that I can feel free to make changes as I go along. Um, and so far everything I've got here is, oh, another dress I want to show you too. Mm. Um, is stuff that I already had. Okay, so this dress. Now, I recently saw Sean from Kittenish Behaviour has made this one. I saw it on the YouTubes and it looked really, really gorgeous. I mean, obviously, she's a completely different figure from me, but still, I, I'm willing to work with it. Uh, and I was like, oh, I've got that in my stash. I thought about making that pattern before. I totally want to make it. Now, the it's interesting to me, particularly in the, the sleeved version, because it's like the original pattern was made to be a halter, and then they made it a covered up piece for the back and the sleeves. So that's like a separate piece, all of the back and the sleeves, but then the halter business and the halter neckline at the back is all still in place. I think that's cute. And I can totally fabric mix with that. So I was thinking, we're going all black, um, and I've just got this sort of very textured black. Sorry, the light is really, really fading. I'm going to have to wrap this up very soon. I mean, you know, you can go whenever you want. But <laughs> um, So there's that. Uh, and then I have this really beautiful, from that same, like an off-cut from the wholesaler, silk. Oops, wrong side. Um, silk print with sequins on it and beads. Right, so the silk print, I'm thinking for the like midriff panel, right? That little bit there. And you can remove that seam down the middle. Sean's done it. Um, so yeah. So, okay, so that's around the middle with that floral. And then the piece that goes 
that is the sleeves and the back so that's not covering you know that's not essential in this black fabric now this black fabric is actually sheer see you see it on my skin so that would be oh yeah that's a better view so it's like this over the shoulders and the back and then the rest of it just in plain black in the plain black fabric so the bit the bust panels and the skirt just in the plain black and then this is the back and the shoulders and what do they do with it and then the floral bit on across the waist or maybe I should just do all black with this on the shoulders maybe the florals just a step too far Hmm. I don't know. Again, tell me what you think. Is the floral a step too far? I don't know. Alright. Okay, I'm going to stop there. There are other ideas for the second module of the two modules that I will do for spring. Yay, plans! I mean, again, yes, I've also got plans for this Dior collection idea so there's a dress in there that I kind of really want to make um, but I don't know we'll see which ones happen I, I now that I've limited all of this I don't feel quite so overwhelmed um, I've also got another idea which I'll tell you about another time as well for tops I'll start on these tops for oh, I like making tops it's the thing right okay guys that was it that's my new plan for doing plans Right, so it's the modules, so everything mixes and matches, and really restricting the patterns that I have. So picking just those patterns to work with, rather than my whole cupboard full of patterns. Now I just have these ones pulled out here in my drawer, and all the others are packed away in the laundry cupboard. Right, so I've restricted the patterns, and then because the modules all have to mix and match, that means I've restricted the fabrics that I can use. Um, I mean, it's still not incredibly restricted, I, but it's good for me. It's a good restriction for me. Um, so it's, it's like, like trying to make, trying to turn me into a minimalist, a capsule wardrobe person. I think it's, I mean, I don't have a huge amount of clothes. I do kind of wear the same clothes all the time. This is a Butterick pattern, by the way. Um, Gertie for Butterick wrap that I'm, yeah, I've mentioned it in other videos. I'll link it below. Uh, yes, limit the inspiration, limit the number of patterns, make it in that two bottoms, three tops. <laughs> I got cut off again. Um, I think my camera is trying to tell me something like I'm talking too much or something like that. And then I just uploaded all the video. I didn't even notice, didn't even notice that the end was cut off and now it's, it's quite a bit later. Um, again, I, like I know my camera compensates for the light a bit, so maybe it's a bit better. But I've chosen to sit down because I'm exhausted. Um, hold on, actually. That angle's probably better. Although you're seeing some of my random collection stuff over there. Never mind. Um, yes. So, as I was saying, with the modules, I think this is a good idea for plans going forward for me. Because I tend to have a lot of ideas all the time I mean I have a job which involves lots of different things so that's a lot of things going on all the time anyway um, so if I just really cut down the patterns that are available to me cut down just color coordinating fabrics that I can work with but there is still some room in there to kind of redesign things um, then I'll be I, I, I might have a better chance of getting this stuff done. So far, I have really managed to get a video up every Sunday. Um, if you're enjoying all of this absolute blabber, I've just magically changed subjects. Um, right, okay. No, tie it up, Sim. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. Um, if you have ideas on my ideas, please contribute your ideas. That would be great. Chuck me a comment below. Um, yeah, subscribe if you haven't and you like it. Um, and, you know, why would you subscribe if you don't like it? 
I mean, you could, you, you could, I guess. <laughs> Why would you have listened this far if you don't like it? You're nutter. Um, yes, so, so far I have managed to post a video every Sunday for a couple of weeks. I've gotten that far. Um, but it's probably, if you really want to know when I upload a, vo a video, there is that little bell thing and it'll notify you, hopefully, when that happens, rather than wait for me on a Sunday night because that'll be the Sunday that I don't get it together and it won't be there, you know, if you're that way inclined. I mean, I have certain videos that at certain times, like certain YouTubers that I like to follow, I know that they'll, they'll be something new then, generally. I do it. It's normal. Not that anything I do is. Anyway, have a great night. So good to chat with you. Gonna love you and leave you. Bye. <laughs>